I accept your nomination for President of the United oh. States. Sorry, wrong speech. I was a little concerned when Beth said she was doing the introduction. Um, what Beth didn't tell, tell you that, that she routinely yells at me on a daily basis. Um, I love coming to these, these events and speaking, I, but I must say I'm a little bit disappointed because the last one I, I spoke at, the guy before me did about an hour long talk on Bitcoin. So every time I come to a new hotel, um, he was talking about, you know, how you get it, how you find it, how you mine it, and all this stuff. And, you know, I'll be damned if I've been able to find any. I've been wandering around these hotel grounds with a metal detector, and I have yet to find one single Bitcoin. <laughs> but, you know, maybe that's just me. Um, I've been asked today to talk about the Campaign for Liberty controversy with the Internal Revenue Service, everybody's favorite organization. Uh, and Senator Ted Cruz last night said that he had a plan for the defense of our southern border against uh, the invasion uh, that's coming across on a daily basis. And he, th he said, look, there's 110,000 IRS agents out there. Why don't we put those on the border? And that got me to thinking. So, well, look, I, I understand that ISIL only, or ISIS, uh, ISIL or asshole, or ISIL, you know, however that goes, um, they have about 30,000, 40,000 troops, and you know my military background having 110,000 versus 30 or 40, that, that's, those are pretty good odds. Why don't we send them over there? Um, and then somebody said to me when I, when I floated that, they said, well, what if they turn? <laughs> um, so, Earlier this year, uh, Campaign for Liberty is an uh, IRS 501c4 organization, which means it's a not-for-profit uh, organization dedicated to social welfare uh, under the IRS code. Um, what that means from a legal perspective, it means it basically gets a status uh, that, it, that it doesn't pay income taxes on the revenue that it collects because the revenue it collects goes to uh, a purpose uh, that benefits the social welfare of the United States. Uh, and as you know, Campaign for Liberty does a lot of, uh, a lot of things that they fight for the things that we all believe in. Well, as part of that process, uh, because it's a corporation, it still has to file tax returns and says, you know, it has to declare how much money it took in from donations and how much money it spent. Uh, it's a tax return just like any other corporation files, it's just a different form. In the form that charitable organizations file, which is instead of an 1120, which is what the standard corporate tax form is, or as most individuals know, that uh, 1040 is what uh, individual households and individuals use to fill out their taxes. The nonprofit organizations under the IRS code file a 990. As part of that form, there are a series of schedules, just like you have on your personal uh, tax returns. And one of those schedules is called a Schedule B Donor Information uh, 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 form. What is required on that form is the, the organizations are required to list the identity and amount of donations by certain donors to the organization above a certain threshold. Routinely, political organizations have, do not disclose this information to the IRS. And you can just take a stab at why they don't do that is because, you know, if I'm giving to a group that is fighting for a political cause that may be popular or unpopular, I don't necessarily want everybody and their brother to know uh, that I'm giving money to that group. Um, and I certainly don't want the government maybe knowing that I'm giving money to a group that's complaining about the IRS. Uh, I certainly don't want the IRS to know that. So often these nonprofit groups will put in to comply with the, the statute, the regulation that requires this, they will fill out that Schedule B with a donor number and the amount of the donation. This is a pretty standard practice in the uh, nonprofit world and routinely, you know, groups do this on an annual basis and there's no, there's no fuss about that. But according to the IRS statute, the the commissioner of the IRS has the discretionary authority to ask for the identity of donors. Now, Campaign for Liberty has been in business for the last, I guess, six years now. Um, and last spring, uh, it got a notice uh, from the IRS said, 
you didn't fill out your Schedule B. You sent us an incomplete Schedule B. You didn't identify your donors. Identify your donors or we're going to take further action. Uh, we've responded by saying, well, we didn't identify the donors because constitutionally we don't believe we have to, contrary to what the, uh, the statute might say. We think the Constitution trumps your silly little statute. Uh, and here are the cases why uh, we think support our argument. One of the cases is the NAACP versus Alabama case from the late 50s. And if you can remember what was going on, then most of you are not old enough. Thankfully, that's one of the things I'm not old enough for. Um, I don't remember the case, but I can read the case and, and, and know my American history. Um, there, were, there were instances where localities, state governments, they wanted to know who was giving money to groups like the NAACP. So in Alabama, it wasn't necessarily um, uh, a friendly environment to a group like the NAACP at that time. So they wanted to know who's giving money to these rabble rousers at the M NAACP. Well, why would you want to know that if you're you know, a local sheriff's department or if you're a state government? Um, you want to know that so you can figure out who the troublemakers are, OK? Um, that's exactly the problem you've seen today in instances where organizations that have had their donors accidentally disclosed either by the IRS or by state uh, officials and state organizations and state governmental departments to their political enemies. Then their political enemies are able to use that identity to either boycott somebody's business, harass somebody, picket their homes, single them out for treatment, and all in an effort to chill their free speech rights. So that's why groups like Campaign for Liberty don't give that donor information out. Well, the IRS said, no, we want it. They, we sent them a letter and said, we don't think you're entitled to it. You know, look at the case NAACP versus Alabama, look at the union versus uh, the UAW versus the national right to work case from the late 1970s. We, we think the courts have said people have the right to speak anonymously through supporting organizations. Uh, and you, you shouldn't be entitled to this information. Well, the IRS disagreed and they levied a fine against Campaign for Liberty. So when they levied the fine, we doubled down. We sent them a longer letter uh, and said, well, you've levied a fine. We think your, your, your statute is constitutionally suspect and here are the reasons why. There's a principle in the law, especially with regard to the first constitutional uh, law, with regard to the First Amendment that when the government creates a law or a regulation, it has to, and it has an impact on somebody's constitutional rights, it has to be narrowly tailored and the regulation has to serve a compelling governmental interest. The IRS's argument in this in instance is that they need, in order for tax purposes, to figure out who's giving money to these C4s um, for tax enforcement purposes. Well, that argument really doesn't hold a lot of water because, as I'm sure your supporters are aware of Campaign for Liberty, as a C4, your donations aren't tax deductible. Um, so why does the government need to know how much you give to Campaign for Liberty? You're not claiming a tax deduction on it, and Campaign for Liberty is already disclosing that it's getting X number of dollars. Um, it doesn't need to know who it's coming from. There's no prohibition on foreign uh, money coming into Campaign for Liberty. Uh, there are, you know, it's a charitable organization, just like a civic association. Um, so what is the purpose behind getting the identity of a particular donor to a liberty-oriented organization? I can't think of one. I can think of all kinds of nefarious purposes that someone might use by finding out who the supporters of an organization are. Uh, if Campaign for Liberty has taken an unpopular position on an issue, uh, how many are familiar with the Mozilla case, uh, the, Mo the, the uh, situation with the chairman of Mozilla? I know there's a guy that works for Mozilla in the audience somewhere. Um, in, in California, and, and this isn't just a step aside for a second, but this isn't just a, a federal problem with IRS rules. States are doing this too. They're trying to force nonprofit groups to identify their donors. In California, they had a ballot initiative and they have a law that says if you spend, if you donate more than $100 to a ballot initiative, you have to, you, you have to file a report and, that, and the identity of the people that spent 100, donated $100 are 
listed at the Secretary of State's office. Well, that information is FOIAble, you know, Freedom of Information Act. Um, even though it's, you know, I mean, whose who's business in the government is it anyway if, that you're donating money to a ballot access issue? Um, I find that personally offensive, but that's just me. A lot of things offend me. Um, but anyway, one of the guys that donated money to this ballot initiative was the head of Mozilla. Uh, and uh, people that were on the other side of that issue politically found out that he had given, a th I think, $1,000 to this cause, and they started to protest. Well, the guy ended up losing his job. You know, think about that. If you're, if you're against, let's say, a... Uh, school bond referendum, you know, which, you know, the unions and the, you know, P the captive PTAs, union captive PTAs love these things because, you know, they get, they get more money to load up government debt, you know, and if you vote against it, you're some kind of crazy person. Well, if you start donating money to camp a local campaign for liberty organization and all of a sudden some neighbors that don't like you or are on the other side of that, uh, that issue decide that they find out who you are and how much you gave, and you've got your little corner coffee shop, and they decide to start picketing you, you might think twice about donating money next time. And that's a, that's a, that has a chilling effect on free speech. And aren't we all about being able to speak our mind, assemble with the people we want to assemble with who are like-minded and want to petition our government and tell our government when we think they're wrong? Isn't that what the First Amendment's all about? So now we have the IRS, the federal government, saying, look, we want, to, want you to identify who your supporters are. And what is one of the, what is the, one of the three-letter agencies that Campaign for Liberty has picked a fight with? IRS, okay. You know, Lord knows what the Fed would do with this information. Um, but so the IRS essentially wants Campaign for Liberty to identify people that have strong opinions against certain things that the IRS is doing. Um, and I think that's wrong, and I think co the Constitution actually supports us. So we fought back and forth through a series of letters, and we actually got ready. We prepared a lawsuit, and we were about ready to fight. Um, and the IRS actually backed down. They would... They withdrew, they abated the penalty. Uh, they sent us one of those lovely form letters. And, and anybody who's had correspondence with the IRS is, is going <laughs> to, you're going to sympathize with this. We get a letter that says, we're fining you X number of dollars one day. The next day we get a letter, these are all form letters, that says, we got your correspondence. We will respond to you in 45 days. No action will be taken then. But this other letter says, we are going to take your firstborn <laughs> within two weeks. And then there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Um, so we got, and that actually happened twice, where we got a, a letter that said, you know, the fine's increasing because you didn't pay it. And a couple days later, we got, thank you for your correspondence. We'll respond to you in 45 days. Um, well, we did finally get a letter that said we are abating the penalty, but what we did not get from them was an acknowledgement that they are no longer requesting that information. And I know from representing other groups and other clients uh, that that request will rear its ugly head again sometime in the future. If not against Campaign for Liberty, it'll rear its head against somebody else. This is a bad law. It's a bad regulation, uh, and it should be wiped off the books. So what we've done... Uh, What we've done is taken a two-tier approach. We've asked them for clarification. We've said, look, um, we understand you've abated the penalty, and thank you. We, we appreciate that. But, you know, it's kind of like my kids. You know, did you spill the chocolate milk in the living room? Well, Dad, I had chocolate milk in the living room. Uh, yes, but did you spill the chocolate milk? Uh, we wanted to know, are you withdrawing the request for this private information? Because uh, Dr. Paul has said, and he said, it, he said it directly to me, he said, we will, under no circumstances, disclose our donors' identities. Um, that's none of their business. And the Constitution doesn't require us to do it, and the Constitution certainly doesn't allow them to do that and try to intimidate our, our supporters' free speech rights. <laughs> So
So we're waiting to hear back from, from them on that. And we're also uh, working with some legislators, some of whom you heard last night, uh, to try to get this statute removed from the books. Um, and that's, that's going to be a tough fight. Uh, the, unfortunately, the, the um, Congress passes laws and the bureaucracy writes regulations. And often those regulations uh, are creatures that spontaneously arise from the minds of, you know, the hundreds of thousands of bureaucrats in the system uh, that really have no rational basis um, because I can't think of a reason why an, uh, the identity of a supporter to a nonprofit organization where there's no tax deductibility involved, there's no tax compliance issue involved. If Campaign for Liberty makes a mistake or, or doesn't report the income that it, that it receives, that's its problem. It's not the donor's or supporter's problem. Um, there's no requirement for Campaign for Liberty to give receipts for donations or anything like that. There's no, the, when you make a donation to Campaign for Liberty, the, the C4 entity, um, it's not tax deductible, so you don't get to write on your tax return, I gave, you know, $100 to Campaign for Liberty, therefore I got a $100 tax write-off. Campaign for Liberty Foundation, yes. You should all give to Campaign for Liberty Foundation and take a tax deduction because you know what? That's less money that the government gives and the Campaign for Liberty can give out, the foundation can give out scholarships to deserving young people. Um, and I'd rather see money going to them than the IRS. But with a foundation, there are tax deduction issues. But what happens there is Campaign for Liberty sends out a little form that says you've given a tax deductible contribution of X number of dollars and you include that with your tax return just like you include your W-2. So there's no, there's no reason in that instance for a nonprofit group to have to disclose donor identity because there's already another alternative way that's least restrictive to accomplish any governmental interest. But with Campaign for Liberty, the C4 organization, there is absolutely no interest uh, that the government, I, I'm, I'm confident that the government can lay uh, other than a general uh, claim of tax enforcement uh, that they could lay and with a straight face and say that this is a compelling governmental interest and this is why we need the identity of donors disclosed. So regardless of what they want, we're not giving it to them. We're going to fight them all the way. If it ends up turning into a lawsuit, you guys will be the first to know. Right now, hopefully they will see the error of their ways and hopefully we'll be successful in Congress in removing this ugly and hideous statute from the books um, because the right of the American people to speak freely, assemble with like-minded folks, and cause hell for politicians. That's a fundamental right. That's why it's first in the Second Amendment, or First Amendment, that's why it's first in the Bill of Rights. Um, and since I'm also chairman of the National Association for Gun Rights, that's why I've got the Second Amendment. We protect all these others. So thank you very much. And it's good seeing everybody again this year. Thank you.